So Geraint, we're back again and we're going to ask one of the big questions about the universe around us, which is where did all these chemical elements come from in the first place? It's an excellent question and I think I think it's too big a question for us to do in, in one uh, one of these sort of chats. Yep. I think we have to split this across a couple. I think what we do is we focus on um, the first elements, yep. okay? The elements that were forged out of the birth of the universe, out of the Big Bang, mm -hmm. okay? So today we'll talk about um, Big Bang nucleosynthesis. Right. So let's... Let's go way, way back, way, way, way back to the initial stages of the universe. Right? Okay. We know that the universe was exceedingly hot. Mm -hmm. We know that the universe was exceedingly dense. And so this is a tiny, tiny fraction of a, a second after the birth of the universe. Mm -hmm. This is after this period known as inflation, which we'll discuss again at some point. Mm -hmm. The universe is really hot. Um, and in these conditions, normal matter as we know it just simply can't exist. You know, if you took a normal atom and you plonked it in there, it would be struck from all sides by other atom, or other particles, photons, etc. It would be ripped apart. Yep. So we have this soup. Mm -hmm. We have a soup which is uh, contains quarks and electrons and lots of photons bouncing around. Mm -hmm. Other strange things have already happened. Okay. We've already gone through this stage in the universe whereby, um, you know, we had lots of reactions going on, but somehow some sort of asymmetry in those reactions meant that there was more matter than antimatter. Right. And we, we are going to start off with a universe that has matter in it. Right. And we'll deal with this matter, antimatter, symmetry, asymmetry. That's question, that yeah. is a, it's a big question. It's one of the coolest questions. But we've got this really hot soup. There's lots of particles. Um, there's lots of massive particles, but they have a very short lifetime. And they tend to die away very, very quickly. Okay. Okay. So things start to cool down. Quarks start to stick together into other particles. Massive particles start to decay into other particles. Everything is cooling as the universe expands. Right. It's still fiery hot. Yeah. You know? So um, cooling down, cooling down. We get into the epoch which people start to talk about of this epoch of nucleosynthesis, which is roughly approaching one second after the Big Bang. Mm -hmm. Okay. Approaching. Where we have this sea of the lightest mass particles. We have electrons, yep. photons, protons, and neutrons. Right. And as you know, in this hot soup, um, there are effectively slightly more protons than there are neutrons. Right. So do you know why? So uh, there's a couple of reasons for this, actually. Yeah. So one of them is in the early universe, when it's really super hot, you have all these processes that will make all of the other sorts of things on the menu. Yeah. So if things are hot enough and you've got something on the menu which costs a certain amount of energy, it'll get made one way or another. Um, in particular, there's a, there's a processes that will turn protons into neutrons and neutrons into protons. Mm -hmm. Okay, They're actually via the weak force, which is kind of interesting. There's, there's some interesting stuff involved there. But um, the important thing is because that neutron is slightly heavier, it takes a little bit more energy for it to make. And so when this reaction is going back and forward, as the temperature cools towards the point where that, that energy difference starts to matter, the, the equilibrium, the, the place where these reactions are in balance, will actually prefer to make slightly more of the proton because they're a bit cheaper. They just take a little bit less energy. So that effect on its own will leave you with a universe which is about a sixth. One in, there'll be a sixth more if that makes sense uh protons than neutrons no that's not right there'll be a uh, um the ratio of protons to neutrons will be a sixth sorry not a sixth more um on top of that that process stops at some point okay as things cool down enough and we're sort of left with that level of you know uh one in six also free neutrons are unstable and so they will start to decay and so you have these neutrons, they're freshly made. Uh, there's not enough of these of the, the that other reaction to sort of mess with them very much. But a free neutron, if it's just sitting there in empty space, will last about 15 minutes before it spontaneously decays into a proton. So when all that's said and done, uh, once you take that into account as well, there's a slight factor there, um, you know, a few minutes into the universe, that means that the ratio, there's, there's a ratio of now one-seventh of of protons to neutrons. Okay, okay. So so it's the mass difference between the protons and the neutrons, which... Which does most of the work. And the reason that we care, 
mm-hmm. is that, as you said, free neutrons decay. Mm-hmm. So what must happen is that when we come out of whatever happens in the Big Bang, uh, free, any neutrons that are left over must get sucked up into atoms. And what yeah. we want to know is how, how that process occurs. Yeah. Right. So let's go back. We've got this soup. Yeah. Okay. Protons, neutrons, electrons, and photons, fiery hot. Yep. Universe is cooling down. What happens? So, the reason why it, it's obviously hot enough for nuclear reactions to happen right, at these early, at very early times. The problem is it's also hot enough for for nuclear reactions to unhappen. So, if you make something, you you make a nucleus. So you said before you stick an atom in, and the atom gets blown apart you stick a nucleus in and it gets blown apart as well there's enough energy around to just rip anything apart so uh what we're waiting for is where the reaction will happen but the product that you make won't immediately be blasted apart by all of the proton by all the protons and neutrons and photons especially Uh around so what so what's the first thing that's made the first thing you can make is called the deuterium Deuteron. The deuteron. Deuterium. So you take one proton and one neutron and you stick them together. And why can't you stick two protons and two ne- or two neutrons together? No, we talked about this. Yeah, I, know. this is- I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah this, is, this, I, 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 this is a lovely part. So we should just point out, uh, we have spoken about this, that we'll put a link back. But we don't have stable diprotons. Yeah. We don't have stable dineutrons. But we do have this thing, the deuteron. But one of the, one of the issues of the deuteron is it's a fragile beast. Yeah. So typically... If you look at um, a, a nucleus in the universe, you know, pick, pick one of the elements, the, the periodic table. If you want to reach in and grab out one of those nucleons, you want to grab a proton, you want to grab a neutron, the amount of energy to do that, obviously that's not the method, but the amount of energy at the end of the day is in, in particle physics units about 8 mega electron volts, 8 mm-hmm. MeV. The deuteron... On the other hand, if you want to pull that apart, there's only two of them, so that's the only option you've got. Uh, it takes only 2.2 MeV. And this is a problem. You think, oh, that's great. They're really easy to, to make. But they're also really easy to fall apart. So uh, as the universe is cooling, 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 you have the amount of time, right? You have the time in the universe where your average nucleus would probably stick together. Once the typical photon that's flying around has less than that 8 MeV to sort of knock something out of a nucleus, then we're fine. We could make one of these nuclei, right? Unfortunately, there's still enough energy around for it to blast apart the deuteron, which is the first thing we have to make. So we have to wait eight, no, not enough, wait for it to come down, wait for the energy to come down to 2.2. And then now we can start to build up some, by via these reactions, via the protons and electrons, we can now build up some deuterium. Not protons and electrons. Ah, Protons and neutrons. Neutrons, yes. Like, in all of this, electrons are flying around just doing whatever they like. <laughs> they it will be a long time before they, they, they get a job. Yeah, 300,000 years. Okay, so, um, so how long do we have to wait? So Big Bang, what, what time does it sort of cool down to enough? It, it's roughly around a, a second. Uh, so, okay. so, And then nuclear reactions start sort of, um, you know, in, in sort of minute yeah, after about a minute. Okay, so what? So we're so, in that time scale. So what happens? The universe cools. Some protons start to join with uh, uh, neutrons. You start to create deuterium. Mm-hmm. But then what happens? I mean, th- things keep cooling. Things keep cooling. So once that happens, there's another. There's two more easy reactions we can do straight away. Once you've got deuterium, right? Smash together. Uh, you've also got protons lying around. You can smash together another proton in there and make what's called helium-3, two protons and one neutron. Mm-hmm. Okay. Once you've got helium-3 building up and flying around, you can smash two of those together, and what you'll make then is helium-4, which is two protons and two neutrons, with two extra protons will come out of that reaction. So the short story then is once you've got that deuterium, you'll very quickly turn almost all of it into helium-4. Okay. And so that's that's where we're at. And helium-4 is a very strongly bound nucleus, right? Yeah, it's, despite being very small, it's it has that 8 MeV, 8, eight mega electrons. Yeah. You need to pull something out. Okay. And then I guess things just keep smashing together and smashing together and you make lead and gold and... You're, so well, here's the problem. What happens? Um, 
what we, what we've got now is a universe which is mostly helium four and protons, mm-hmm. right? All the new all the neutrons are inside the helium. Uh, there's electrons, as I mentioned deliberately. Uh, um, <laughs> they they're not doing anything. They you know they're just flying around. The the thing you'd like to do next is maybe maybe we throw a proton into the helium uh, nucleus as well, and we make what's called uh, lithium five. Unfortunately, that one's unstable. It'll fall apart all on its own, regardless of what the universe is doing. So that's not going to work. Okay. If I took two helium um, and I, I chuck those two together, I'll make beryllium-8. It's unstable as well. It'll fall apart no matter what happens. And the other option, of course, is those two protons, which I can't make those work together. They'll make a diproton. Um if you remember our last one, you can actually eventually the sun in the sun. If you whack them together enough, two protons, you will make a deuteron. Yep. But you need a weak force to turn up. That takes a very long time. That's not happening either. And so we're now stuck. Um, what we would need to happen is actually three helium nuclei to come together at the same time, because that's the triple alpha reaction we've talked about before. That would make uh, carbon. carbon. The problem is. That requires very hot, very dense conditions. So unfortunately, we like we had to wait around and wait around until deuterium was nice and comfortable, and then we made some deuterium. Conditions were still hot enough to turn most of that into helium four, but we've missed the boat for for uh, carbon. carbon. There's, there might be some trace amounts, but basically that's the end of the story. Um, uh, and that's all the elements you get from the early universe. So, uh, if I remember rightly, there's a great book by uh, Steven Weinberg, mm-hmm. First Three Minutes, yep. where he points out you have all these nuclear reactions, but as he said, by the time you get to about three minutes, the universe is cool to such a point that the general energies are now below this sort of scale for nuclear reactions, yep. and the nuclear <laughs> reactions are turned off. Yep. And so we end up with the universe. It's still mainly protons. Yeah. Yeah. Any loose neutrons have decayed into protons. Yep. All of the other um, uh, neutrons, effectively all of them, are bound together into uh, helium. Yep. And there's still a few other little trace elements that have made their way through. Yeah. So, so remember along the way we made uh, we made some uh, deuterium. There's still a little bit of that left over. Yeah. Um, it's, it's at about, for, for every particle in the universe, about one in every 300,000 is going to be deuterium, but that's enough for us to go looking for it, and we can actually see that. At a similar-ish kind of level, there will be some helium-3 left over, which just didn't quite make it into the helium-4. And the other one is actually there will be something called lithium-7. So every now and then uh, I am uh, the, the reactions will, will actually produce one of these ones where that's three protons and four n- neutrons. Okay. Uh, that's, so there are, I think that's at a level of about 10 to the power of 10. But there are very trace amounts of this lithium-7 around as well. Okay. So, so these are what known as the primordial abundances, yeah. right? So our universe was born effectively 75% hydrogen, yep. 25% helium. By mass. By mass. Everything else is just trace. Yeah. And there's, there are no heavy elements at all. Yeah. But quite clearly... What we have is our universe. We have lots of heavy elements. We have the carbon. We have oxygen, etc. Yeah. So they're not on the scene. They must arise later. Yeah. And I guess that's going to be the subject of our our next one. Is yep. where do these heavier elements come from? That's part two.